boom we are streaming on the third anniversary and I'll be a bit slow here because I got my happy anniversary to pro nuclear agencies and apologists uh, just finished rendering in my video so I'll say hi to everybody hi Penny Fran Missing Sky Tree Lori Steven Starlight just passing through Stacy Lane Mervin Uh, Paravus, I can't even pronounce it. James, Diver Dude, Friends, okay, hang on. Boom, we are streaming on the third end. I can't believe I got a big old screen again, but actually I'm the right size this time. It was supposed to be a small screen. Anybody don't know what's going on? It takes a couple of minutes to warm up. Thank you, Granny, Fran, Mass Sterilization, Dana Tosta Bike, Piano. Did I get everybody? Let me come back up. I think I got everybody there so far. Anybody else want to say hi? We're still warming up here. Lori, NB, just passing through. I'm sure I got. Okay, I guess I got everybody. Unseen recording, unseen recording, donate, Carter. You were spammed, hang on, I didn't spam you. Not spam. <laughs> you wanna know what I'm doing? I'm just gonna leave that there for an extra few seconds. Let me get rid of this here. Oh, there it goes. That was the ching ching. That was my that was the other move. I'm gonna upload that one's 20 minute video. Let me close that down. Okay, we're up to speed. Ba bing what a boom. I was worried that wasn't gonna work out. Because the computer won't let me do anything else. It'll start freezing up on you when you're rendering a big 20-minute uh, film. And this is all about the apologist. It's just a uh, make sure we don't forget them on the anniversary. Because if it wasn't for them, we might not, not uh, be so sad today. Oh, that is good. And I'll get to that after. I'll plug that. I'll plug that. I'll close that down for a second. <coughs> Three years ago today, Japan was struck with a massive tsunami. This was unimaginable. Other numbers now I'm seeing are over 100 feet high. We know it raced through, and because this is the anniversary of the nuclear power plant, is why I'm making this video today. My heart goes out to the tsunami victims, don't get me wrong. I've seen so much of that in the last couple of days. Not to mention the last three years, but just in the last couple of days. The stories are, um, you just, you couldn't write them up with a science fiction. That people in Minnesota, in Japan, just outside of Fukushima Prefecture, or in that area, the grandmother is the only person who goes upstairs in the house because the radiation numbers are so high. I mean, the implications of that are unimaginable. Their dad has a Geiger counter and he goes out and checks the sidewalk for he lets his daughter play each day because the radiation is liberated right around that entire country. They had three melted reactors and they had missing fuel pools. I'll get to that later. And they had a melted fuel pools at number four that caught fire two different times. Now, this is very grave stuff that I have just said. Just that alone it should get your attention if you're not familiar with the subject. Chernobyl in comparison was one third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown and that part of the core is still headed down to the center of Earth somewhere. But it was and it was a serious uh, accident. Uh, for the first while people went out on the roof for 10 or 15 seconds, I'm sorry, 15 and 20 seconds and then they went home. Never to go on a nuclear site again because they had so much radiation. In Fukushima, they're taking the homeless. They release numbers where they say, oh, you know, 15,000 workers got their five siever doses and they can't go back anymore, which is blatant lies. At the gates of number one, it's a million sievers. Number two was 10 uh, billion becquels a cubic centimeter. And number three was mox fuel. Number three 
uh, was 2 million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. That would make it 18 million times worse than Chernobyl, not counting the missing fuel pools that were above it. 18 million times worse than Chernobyl. The hemorrhaging has not stopped. Even today, it's still hemorrhaging into the atmosphere and also into the ocean. I'll close that down. Let me bring up that headline. U.S. nuclear agency hid concerns. Hailed safety record at Fukushima melt at NBCnews.com. What they done was they went into the fire and they got links at the bottom of this massive article about how the NRC in the emails were lying. This is astronomical to see anything remotely like that, folks. And at the bottom of it, they got the links to uh, five PDF files. Hey, everybody. Come here. Uh-oh. I have to hang on a second. Zoe. Sorry, I'm so sorry. How that's never happened before. That's gonna be a bit of an issue. Let's keep going here, that'll settle down in a few seconds. F Fukushima has three missing cores. They're missing. Uh, maybe uh, hang on a second, just need that door closed because of an airplane. I can't concentrate all of a sudden. Can you close that, Raj? It's brutal. Airplane, yeah. dog. I got two hour show lined up here. Oh, do you? So, um, do you want to get dragged into this or what? I don't know if I do. Well, they're going to be listening to your feet walking around. They're going to be listening to your breathing, That's listening to you smoking. Might as well join the conversation. Hang on, yeah, folks. Okay. Might as well join the conversation. You want to put a fork in that before the kettle screams? There you go, Raj will join in the conversation. Maybe. <laughs> this is, uh, I'm not sure how this is going to work with Roger. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll ignore all the background noise yeah. and it'll settle down in a few seconds. So, no, go ahead, Roger, do your thing, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. Not much I can do about it. You're coming in, you're coming in. Reactor 1 to 4. In the first 100 hours, Hang on, it pops up here. So in the first 100 hours, there's 120 billion becquels of plutonium. Now it doesn't say whether it's plutonium 239, 240, 241, 242, but they all got a quarter million uh, year half-life. Yeah, this is going to be chaos, I can see that. So 7.6 trillion becquels of neptunium 239, which breaks down into plutonium 239, 238. Uh, yeah, 239. And the media had concealed that risk. Well, three years later, this is the anniversary. I can see that could be a problem. So, three years later, Roger, on the anniversary, do you got any input? Or are you just going to sit there? And no, other than the stuff which, was, which came out today. Which was? Uh. Talk, just talking about how much stuff uh, was being stored in tanks and they're probably going to have to dump it in the ocean. Right. And uh, also that... Uh, well, they can't keep it on site if they have an the, accident. The Nuclear Authority in the United States did everything they possibly could. Right, to, we just covered that a little bit. The NRC uh, emails? Yeah, yeah. You read that whole yeah, article? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Did you see the PDF files at the bottom of it? No, I didn't. Look ah, yeah. how many was there? Because that was the next question. <laughs> There was five PDF files to the NRC to the fire releases of how the NRC, now we covered that extensively, right? Uh, Alison McFarland, the head of the NRC, sat in front of the Senate and perjured herself about a month ago, and we've covered that in videos. Remember, I got the clips up on this site here. And she said there was no models anywhere on the planet showing a threat to America, to the water, to the land, or to the ocean, or to the coastline, or to the fisheries. Which is an, a fabrication because their own, they have their own CCM-137 model. 
that shows the northern hemisphere completely covered in radioactive fallout in a 40-day model, the entire northern hemisphere blanketed in a radioactive fallout. <laughs> we'll, we'll settle down in a second. Was it possible that the bulk of the melted fuel in Unit 1 containment is still inside of it because all three cores had melted? The fuel fragments were sneezed out of Unit 1. There was 225 sievers back in May the 30th. That's a deadly dose, okay? That's a deadly dose at number 1. Uh, most people don't know, but reactor number 1 melted down in 5 hours. And that on October the 16th, there was a million sievers at the gates in number one. Now, 500 sievers is you're going to be dead in less than a week, two weeks if you're really fortunate and got good treatment. 500. So the homeless were sent in there as uh, guinea pigs, as the canary in the coal mine. And when they dropped those, the bulldozer probably went in there and buried them. Because you can't get the body back, and what are you going to do with it anyway? Because the body has now is now radiation itself because that's how radiation works so if you were to take a, a, a piece of metal and put it alongside of the chain reaction rods that metal become just as bad not a hundred percent as bad but you know extremely contaminated and in the fact that it had to be put on the waste contamination site till the end of time it's supposed to be in a sarcophagus not out sitting in a pit like Hanford in the United States but that, <coughs> but that doesn't ma matter because TEPCO just, didn't they just say today that um, oh, they've got uh, all, the, all the equipment to clean it up now and in fact they'll be, be able to export the technology to clean up nuclear accidents now. Is ha, that right? Ha, ha, yeah, ha, ha, I missed yes. that part. <laughs> oh, didn't you? So TEPCO is saying they got the technology, no, no worry, go back to sleep, yeah, shut up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the significance of it is that TEPCO, there's nobody to control down there whatsoever. Did, and that was admitted. AP came out with a headline this morning. Let me bring that one up. Associate Press, which is a really strange headline. Radioactive material spews into the air and the sea at Fukushima. That's today's headline saying it's still going on today. It's still spewing. And so I liken it that if I took a river and I dumped a bucket of dye in the river and then I chased that dye by helicopter downstream and watched it. You would see it starting to disperse and get thicker and thicker and then you would see it um, actually lose its color and further down the stream you wouldn't even see it, right? Well, in Fukushima it's the equivalent of having trucks all day long lined up for a thousand miles behind you and as quick as they can they're dumping dye into the river and it doesn't stop. 1440 minutes a day there's a yeah. truck dumping dye in the river yeah. and so I'm going to want you to get you to wait three years and you're going to get in a helicopter and go down river and find out where it stopped you find out the estuaries that ain't affected that are attached to those rivers you're not going to even if it was a 2,000 mile river with a thousand estuaries every one of them would be the color of the dye that you pumped in there all day every day and that's what the isotopes are because like they're invisible you can't see them, you can't smell them, you can't hear them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? But I mean, what they say is, no, it comes out, it disperses, it gets 1,500 miles offshore, there's all that ocean, it's all dispersed now, and it turns to potassium but if it's, 40. if it's still puking out of there... Right, then exactly. <laughs> then that, that doesn't stand up very no, well, no. right? No. Uh, it's, you could probably win the biggest lawyer's contest for it, right, if, if you entered into yeah. a contest. No, it stops when it gets out there, it respects your borders. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Duke Energy, which is the big coal, coal outfit in the United States. All their ponds are leaking, and they have been leaking, and they're continuing to leak. And it's just like, right. it, it just doesn't stop. It right. just does not stop. Han Hanford is storing it. Yeah. In, in trenches without no liners in it, but it's illegal at the local municipal, municipal dump to put garbage in an online trench, but at Hanford, they have 41 miles of open pits of yellow cake that's contaminated with plutonium, neptunium, americium, yeah, yeah. strontium, cesium. Is the audio okay for everybody? Is that all working out? Hi, Dana. Hi, Jamie. 
Hi, Mama Knox. I got a friend of mine with me. Uh, I don't know what I can say because he's pretty shy, but he's, he, he's been a muscle farmer, his own muscle farming farms here for many years, for almost three decades in British Columbia. And so, like, he watches this as close as anybody, and he's paying attention. He's phoning up. He was aware of the shell fishery dying recently uh, on Vancouver Island. And his instant reaction was, well, they'll put more seeds in the water because that's what they do. They do have die They do have red tides. They do have other impact uh, that could happen, right? So you can't just immediately say it. Even though you know the ocean currents are traveling at a mile an hour, they're going to get here in 227 days. You it just, it's hard. It's hard when you can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't taste it, and you don't visibly see it because you've been there for three decades yourself. It's hard, it's hard to... Uh, Say there's an issue, right, Raj? Is that accurate? Well, it is hard to say that there's an You're issue. You're not seeing. I'm not hearing you no. say anything. No, but there are. I'll rat you out to the crew <laughs> around the planet in a heartbeat. <laughs> but there are other. There not only that. There are other issues, and I can't. I you can't identify it personally. I can't, I can't test for everything. No, but yeah, I must admit, though, after three decades, and because of your background, and because your partner, who recently died of a stroke on Christmas Boxing Day, yeah. Uh, out there at the farm because you guys lived out there for a couple of decades in big beautiful houses and bed and breakfasts and everything but you're retired so to speak <laughs> semi-retired at this stage semi-retired you move into your land on your house on land your other house on land more so than you do well you sold off the other place but you still kept your farm but still you know everybody you're listening to it you're watching it you pay attention you re he reads all of his emails about the updates and everything so he's not seeing it so here goes the comment. <laughs> Stephen, Lisa, Gary, and B. Scotty, Tree, Franz, Paravoice, Ninth Wave, Lunar, Tree, Brie, T. I can't keep up with it. Lori, Scottish Girl, Reran Piano, Stacy Lane. Woo! That was moving along. <laughs> There's a. <laughs> hello, Roger. At least a lot of people said hello, Roger. Hi, everyone. And um, Roger's the guy who actually went and bought me a scooter. Him and his wife went and bought me the scooter. That one with the videos, a few videos back, that's the same guy. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. So we're on the third anniversary, Roger. And the, the media hasn't stopped lying since day one. We've accumulated so much information that disputes and uh, dissects everything they're saying that you've heard me repeatedly from your visits here to the point... Where you just shut up, day in a routine, right? Because, but that's who I am, right? I'm the same person on air as I am when I'm sitting around. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I'm not sure. <laughs> shut up, Dana. Shut up, Dana. And what I was trying to establish, I'll come back on the inside because I got that stream in there. But it looks like everything is working because nobody's yelling. Turn your friggin' volume up or anything else. Reactors are leaking. A hundred billion beckles in the sludge. Japan confirmed full meltdown of three reactors. The military was severely contaminated when Fukushima's uh, unit number three exploded. There was rods blown all over the site. We know the plumes reached Canada in three days. We know they can reach uh, on the ocean at a mile per hour in less than a year, 227 days. But the rain would pick it up and bring it in earlier. And cancer takes a long time to show up. Uh, cancer takes a long time to develop. But when you're ingesting a radioactive hot particle, it's a little bit different. It speeds it up a lot more. So you might the cancers are showing up in Japan right away within two years. Uh, people dying of leukemia, uh, lots of heart attacks. Children in school, two children in one school died at the same time. A uh, student and a teacher died in Japan on the same night from the same school. We've seen schools there with a million beckles in the playground of cesium. And we see the nuclear apologists go out and equate it with bananas. It's okay because you got 4,400 becquels disintegrations in your body every second of potassium 40, Dana. But I, th I think it's really it's it ends up being re really laughable because they you know once again they're going to start soon and try and put in this you know frozen wall to contain everything around there. It's just which it's, is a quite the fable. Yeah, quite <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hang on a second, folks. I'm gonna.
And so that'll work a little bit better. There you go. I'll turn the sensitivity up a little tiny bit. And so everybody can hear that a bit better. Check one, check two. Okay, right. But I, I, what's going on is that, you know, we have to look at how we're going to deal with the radioactive fallout, the economical fallout, as this starts showing up in the next couple of years. And people might panic. And there could be looting. There could be mass crime, according to the media. The whole world will snap and go running down the street. Ah, it's well, friggin' radiation everywhere. Like, and we like don't most think things like out that. there, they're going to try and keep a lid on it as long as they possibly can. And they'll keep suppressing it and suppressing it and suppressing it and suppressing it. Because that's what they've always done? That's because that's what they've always done. And But before it didn't give everybody cancer, but now it does, right? I mean, seriously, you have Do to look at care? it that way. Yes, some of them care, some of them don't care. Will they get to keep their pensions? Do you think they'll be able to keep their pensions when the cancer starts showing up uh, at a phenomenal rate? Which is well, what's they, happening. Well, it depends. who's going to be... The held, autoimmune who, disease. Who exactly is going to be held to account? Who? Right. And the mothers and people in, TEP, in uh, Japan, there's been 1,200 charges filed against TEPCO executives for murder. Right for yeah. crimes, twelve hundred. Yeah. Yeah. So and, far, yeah, yeah, and at the local hospital in Tepco that turned away all the victims, with all the symptoms and signs, and degenerative injuries associated with radioactive fallout, uh, that's owned owned by Tepco. So Tepco owned the hospital, set a policy that they put signs on the door. They weren't going to let people in and check uh, for radioact for radioactive contaminants or internal radiation. We know 5,000 Fukushima workers in the first month had um, 10,000 counts per minute of internal radiation exposure at the local hospital. And at 40% of all the children, I'm sorry, 40% of everybody that went to that hospital uh, had internal radiation extraordinary counts. And so that means they all got cancer. 40% for sure has cancer, according to those uh, surveys, shall we say, right? We can call them what you want, but these are huge, huge numbers immediately to see going on. But then we find out that massive counts were all the way to the west coast of uh, Japan. And that don't mean, I, I really talk about the east coast of Japan, because that's where the prevailing winds are blowing. There was a 60-hour emission when number two blow up, blew up that went straight to Tokyo. And so a lot of the numbers that we heard about for the last couple of years have been only based up on unit number one. Unit number three is missing. That plume is never stopping. They can't get close to it enough to do anything well, to it. The effect of this alone in economic terms with them having to shutting down all the other reactors and stuff on Japan's economy right now has been huge, let alone anything else. Right, Russia's supplying a lot of oil to them, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but then they have uh, the resettlements, right? They have a couple of hundred thousand people they got to give money to because they were in a zone that allowed the resettlement. So the government has to cover that, or the, not the insurance, but TEPCO, which is the government. TEPCO was actually 50% of the shares are owned by the government. Yeah. Right? So once again, you're really looking at the government, I would think. Well, if 50% yeah. of it, But one of the effects, and it threatens your entire nation, who's really, you know, can you put all the which is what they're trying to do, they're trying to put all the responsibilities. And TEPCO says if you've got radiation in your land, really high contaminate, it's yours. <laughs> Pack it up and sell it to the terrorists if we want it, we just don't care. But um, I'm sure they never said that, but that's just me, right? But when you live in a, in a where it's corporate personhood, and so TEPCO executives can't be held responsible, Right? Only the corporation can be held responsible. And the corporation can't be put in a jail cell and it can't be hung from a pole. <laughs> there goes that hope. But you can bankrupt them. Everybody can sue them, but unless the judge just decides to block it. But then you all got to prove. Right? So you all got to go and buy expensive cars. And it still cars. doesn't do anything about fixing the problem. And yeah, right. And so you need to dig up six inches of topsoil throughout the entire country. Well, 30,000 square miles, that's confirmed in Japan, is a wasteland of 300,000 beckles of CCM. There has to be, then, 30 times more strontium-90. If you live in an environment 
with radioactive particles of 11 becquerels, then uh, if you're ingesting that into kilograms of food, that's enough to cause permanent damage to your heart. If it's 50 becquerels, it's going to cause permanent lesions to all your organs. That's been shown over and over. But we're talking about really high gammas, high betas, high alpha emitters that have went through the chain reaction. So when you go through the chain reaction, it's a totally, totally different gamma, beta, and alpha, right? So in the end, though, it's what is the, you know, they say they're doing this, they're doing that, but they don't actually really say this is a... Accomplished. This, well, they don't say this is a massive, great, big disaster. We need the world to help deal with it. Well, and they did do that, but go ahead. Well, they did done it in the sense of we'll take your technology, but we won't take you. See, they done that. They did say, yeah. we want to hear your ideas, but they never said, we want your help. They said it, but they didn't say, we want you to come there. We just want you to give us whatever technology you're talking about, and we'll sort it out with the homeless that we get on the streets every day. Yeah, like Tep TEPCO's going to do that, given the track record that they have? And they got, I don't think so. <laughs> well, they don't do jack shit without action. Uh, Yakuza's first. Can they have permission to go do something, all right? Uh, Cop the Yakuza, can I go wipe my ass after I just took a shit? Yeah, you can wipe your ass, but don't use your left hand. I mean, it's literally at that stage where they control 150 of the 200 suppliers. Smoking on here. This is a non-toxic cigarette. The normal <laughs> cigarette has 4,000 chemicals. There's Send no your such hate thing mails, as a non-toxic cigarette. <laughs> This one ha doesn't have 4,000 chemicals. The EPA grandfathered in 65,000 chemicals, and that's why you're allowed to have 4,000 chemicals in your cigarette. Mine don't have those 4,000 chemicals. Nah, 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 nah. And uh, yours does, so well, not everybody's. Roger doesn't. Roger smokes the same different thing with no chemicals in it. You're pretty smart like that, mister. Okay, uh, Scottish so girl. Not that I'm still smoking. You're still smoking. Well, we digest it. There you are. Everything. Look, Dana's smoking a cigarette. Hi, Char. Mom and Ox. New Guru Magic. And we have Roger, my friend, who is a muscle farmer for almost three decades, uh, as a guest with us. And he has participated in uh, many of my rants. <laughs> and, and Roger runs a radio show here. Also, folks... It's okay to get another narrative. Normally me and Roger will fight for the entire friggin' time. And Roger will play the devil's advocate and I'll play the angel from Fukushima. And Roger will usually go away like, fucking old crippled bastard beat me again. But yeah, I, was, yeah, I had yeah, him yeah. going and I was getting my stroke a few that's times. What, that's I had what you well. like to think. <laughs> <laughs> I seen you kicking a can as you're walking up to your vehicle with your head down like a little school child. <laughs> I would like to win one debate. No, just kidding you, folks. Roger's good. He's been around the block a few times, and we've argued at least probably a thousand times. Yeah, <laughs> at least nine hundred anyway <laughs> that I know about. Just logged in, and so let's go with another headline for everybody to dig us back in. So unit one, two, and three, we just covered all of that. Let's jump over to the next uh, few headlines. We're gonna go. Ay, 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 ay. Canada, how about that one? Here we go. Let's hit Canada for a little kick around. Little kick around. And Roger's seen a lot of these headlines, so that should make it interesting. The first headline, Roger, I got for you it is a 150 foot boat was found off of Canada. I uh, wasn't expecting that one. March 24, 2012, so less than a year later, at a mile per hour. That boat made it off to Queen Charlotte Islands, the Haidegui Islands. Yeah. Um, so, but it just shows you was that... Was it a boat or a barge? That was a boat. That was a boat. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But there's a lot of debris found yeah. up there. In fact, Broken Ass Island here is from uh, the top of uh, the Queen Charlotte's, from Masset, I think. And it's atrocious what's going on up there, because they, they get... They see it first showing up. They're uh, just a few miles away from the tip of North America, the most northerly point in North America, right? Uh, yeah. It's just down the road from Langara Island. Yeah. Yeah, where I met my fate, <laughs> where I met my master. But that boat, uh, washed away in the tsunami, was spotted just over a year later, and that story was March the 23rd. 
Should Canada be concerned about radiation from Fukushima? Doctors and local officials say yes. April 8, 2011. Well, now we know that Canada's radiation test in Vancouver showed iodine-131 in rainwater at 100 times above the U.S. drinking water standards. i got to talk this way because the microphone's over there. So the drinking water standards are 7,000 becquels of potassium-40. So somehow or another, they just equated iodine-131 with potassium-40. Now if I drink um, 100 times above the limit of potassium-40 in my drinking water at 7,000 becquels, that'll probably screw me up all on its own. But 7,000 becquels in my drinking water, I off-gas it. With 7,000 becquels of iodine-131 in my body, I get tumors everywhere. My body attacks and tries to build sarcophagus, which are the tumors around. In fact, your body is the only thing that could suffocate, suffocate, I don't know if that's a word or not, radiation. Because our universities or institutions have all failed us repeatedly. Well, there is, there is a, a minor nitpicking point here. <laughs> yes, right. That, Go ahead on. Sorry. Uh, that ship would travel over here in one year. Right. Would actually, uh, on surface travel, would probably travel faster than right. the actual ocean currents right. themselves. Right. Probably, but probably three or four times. But just below, it could be the wind coming this way and the current coming that way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now I've been in those spots broken down, and yeah. the boat just sits there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it's a hell of a lot of luck, but it does show you that the currents are capable of bringing the surface. Now at the surface, that's where all the phytoplankton that makes the oxygen or the food chain for the yeah. ocean, right? So that was effective right away, right across the ocean, because yeah. it was a radioactive fallout. Yeah. And the isotopes and radioactive particles and atoms, as they hit the ocean in rain, think about rain, how rain, like as a diver, you can look up at the ceiling under the ocean if you're in shallow water, and you'll see the rain hitting it. I've sat there and watched... Um, uh, hundreds of eagles diving down and feeding on heroin, heroin, feeding on heroin. <laughs> the eagles feeding on the heroin. Gotta give me another Jun shot. Junkie eagles. <laughs> <laughs> Junkie eagles. <laughs> but the radioactive uh, rainwater in Canada was a hundred times above. Now, does the radioactive rainwater respect the borders? Did it say? Maybe I'll go down to America. No, there's the border. I'm not going to go down there. Do you think the rain done that, Raj? Do hardly you think the rain like, has like. a conscience and says, Hey, here's the fucking American borders. Homeland Security will be groping me in a minute if I go across that. We'll have the TSA trying to yeah. grab me by my boobs and blah, blah, or blah. Or the Canadian border oh, agency. Man boobs. Sorry? Or the Canadian border agency won't let it in. Okay, well, you got to... When you go... There's a trick to go into Canadian borders. You bring them a donut. Right? And you, you hold your eyes down, you pass them a donut, and they'll take it and they'll say, unpeasant, you can go across the border. Well, the reality of it is you can just run because they're so fat from eating all the yeah. donuts, they can't chase you. Well, they can't get up to the door. Here's they another, have to get up to the here's another little odd you know, offset thing is since the start of the Industrial Revolution, and not that they've been actually doing the finite test that much, they figure that the ocean has had to absorb probably 30% or has absorbed 30% more carbon dioxide yeah. than was normally present. So do you think that got anything to do with um, 90,000 container ships on the ocean? Each container ship well, is it's, making... It's all, all it, it's since the Industrial Revolution, so it's all container ships, it's all stuff. But they're now, burning the bunker fuel, which was yeah. illegal un until they changed the law. Well, right? they, that was supposed to be on a They weren't burning site. bunker fuel in the first place, they were right. using sailing ships. Right. Yeah, originally. I must originally, have lost it. And then they, then they turned into bunker fuel. Yeah, they, they changed the law so you can use bunker fuel, because up yeah. to that point, bunker fuel had to be stored on a toxic waste site at about yeah. 1,800 bucks a ton. Yeah. And But all of a sudden, they created this law where the container ships are allowed to burn yeah. the bunker fuel. Yeah. So they get it for free, yeah. literally. And it's very inefficient. Yeah. It's like 5% yeah. or 10% burn. Yeah. Well, 90,000 of those ships is the animosity equivalent of 42 trillion people driving an automobile all day, every day on Earth. Worth of emissions yeah. into our environment. Yeah. So so it just you just add up to it. So when you have those sorts of emissions going into the ocean and then you have radioactive fallout going into the ocean, which also you should consider the fact being that they did probably 200 aerial nuclear weapons tests in the right. last 
50, 60 odd years. Right, and so all the 134 would have been gone from that. All the iodine would have been gone for that. The strontium would have been broken down, was still around. The cesium-137 with a 30-year half-life times 100 is still going to be around. around. Yeah. But they're able to identify this stuff because this is different. See, a nuclear detonation is completely different from a nuclear meltdown. The nuclear meltdown is creating isotopes As continuously, oh, yes, constantly, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so lots of the rods and yeah. particles were dragged out into the ocean when the tsunami came back yeah. out during the explosion. And so they're sitting on the ocean floor emitting, puking, uh, pu stuff. puking out uh, yeah. x-rays and neutrons yeah. and, uh, and splitting the atoms, creating the isotopes. Now, isotopes are created, as we've talked about many times, uh, for directed energy weapons. We've been able to make nuclear power. We don't need any extra isotopes to make the nuclear power. We worked that out almost 70 years ago. But all these directed energy weapons can't exist without the exotic isotopes, and that's why... Anyway, my opinion, I feel that they're making uh, nuclear power is strictly, you know, they're making these MOX fuels concoctions, plutonium and uranium, that's already enriched from nuclear missiles. So this is nuclear missiles they were using down there that were sitting in a silo for 30 or 40 years. They remilled the plutonium, remilled the uranium, put it through a chain reaction again, because it was already highly uh, volatile before because it already went through the chain reaction. Went through it again, and they were making these exotic isotopes to use for long-range directed energy lasers and weapons. And the military is filling their ships and they're trying to do airplanes and everything else, their satellites. Yeah. That's their future. Well, is that, laser that I don't know anything. Yet. Just the stuff you heard me talking about. I'm sure well, yeah, about. but that I don't know anything about because I don't know much about direct energy weapons. But you know what? Even making nuclear power for a long time. It hasn't changed literally at all because they haven't no. built they haven't built any in the last thirty or forty years. Yeah. So now we're talking about, and but what it means is that uh, they don't need all these exotic isotopes yeah. to make nuclear power. Well, is the point I'm trying to make for people. At, at least I mean I can't I don't know exactly how many nuclear reactors are in the United States, more than forty for sure, and probably more like 70 or let's say 70 for example well 40 of those reactors are exactly the same design, design general as electric the ones out of at, Fukushima, at, uh, at Fukushima right. military, yeah. military industrial complex um, so what we got here Mama, hi Mama Knox uh, Scottish girl Lisa illusion is over friends Jamie Diver dude, Dana tossed that bike. <laughs> we had a, we had a couple of really good trolls last night. We're I miss them today. I'm sorry, trolls, come back. Checks and balances. Says they had to subscribe again. Dub forward. Uh, is there anybody out there? Crimson runaway to Jesus. Want us to say hi to Lori. Tree diamond dog. Uh, I'm not very good with this today, am I? Candace, woo, we got quite a few people there. Well, I just can't keep up with it. Okay. So, uh, 100 times the radiation levels in Canada. Let's grab another headline. 100 times the iodine. So, the iodine, they say, don't worry, it dissolves in eight days, but it actually don't radioactively decay for 80 days. It can't travel by itself. There would have been 10 times more iodine 132, 10 times more iodine 133. There were every three iodine. 131 is created, the fourth one is an iodine 129 with a 15 million year half life. This stuff doesn't travel by itself. You would have had the strontium or cesium 137, cesium 134 with a 300 year life, 30 year half life. You would have had 30 times more strontium, according to PBS and the other experts that broke the story on that. 30 times more. It still doesn't travel along. You would have had the urethal peroxide sulfur buckyballs and there's links below uh, to that stuff these, these are peer review studies if you go over to Springer and type in Fukushima you'll get 3900 peer review studies but you gotta pay for each one of them you can't even read the synopsis on them and Health Canada detected massive amounts of radioactive material from Fukushima iodine-131 spiked above maximum allowable limits which is what they're talking about for drinking water that's frightening of four or five sites now, Roger, we went over, remember that, Health Canada's yeah. charts, yeah. and they flew along the coastline, 
Right? Remember when yeah, that yeah. showed up? Me and you talked about it extensively here. And we looked at it, and the plume, they, sh they threw a, uh, flew at 730, uh, 750 feet from one end of Canada to the other end for 18 hours, collecting samples every 15 minutes. Well, actually, it was up. It was along the West Coast, not one end of Canada to the other. Yeah, did I just say that? Yeah, you did, yeah. <laughs> Had to wait for the instant replay later. But, yeah, no, I probably did. And so, yeah, you're right. From B all of BC's coastline... And they done this for 18 hours, and they proved definitively there was massive plumes, snowstorms, invisible storms, lingering over British Columbia, and they never told people to stay indoors. This is why we bought that plane for them. That's why we paid for all the equipment they got. That's why we paid their salaries. That's why they're probably not going to get a pension. That's why they were able to do it. It's because the Canadians wanted them out there to do it. When they found out it was dirty, it was like, shit, don't tell anybody. And that was part of the national security that the Americans declared about. And what happened was they took all their radioactive uh, detectors offline. And five days after this story broke, Canada took its radio detection and mobile detection units. It had 18 of them out there, took them all offline. Yeah, and said, oh, well, there, there isn't a problem, so we don't have to actually have to do any more testing. At all. Right. So and by doing that, then universities don't got to draw up any models. Yeah. Please don't have to go around, stay in your house, this yeah, is an yeah, emergency. Yeah. Fire departments don't have yeah. to run around going, I don't see fuck all, where's the towel, right? <laughs> I don't see nothing. I, you know, ra if radiation was the color of rainbows, we'd, we'd be, we would never leave our fucking houses. If, or we would run outside our houses and run back in one or the other. <laughs> be, ah, ah. So just imagine if radiation became visible for just a few minutes. There'd be car accidents everywhere because you wouldn't be able to see each other. Is that fucking much radiation fill? When you think about two grams, or a gram produces strontium, produces more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet, and how much of that was actually cannibalized when it fell in on top of the melted reactors that are missing. And I got credible stories where uh, studies have showed you think it's up to a half mile down. And what's stopping it from going a mile or five miles down again? I'm a little uh, confused because you're talking about something at 9,000 degree Fahrenheit and rocks will burn up at 2,000. Well... And they got something down there we should know about? Who knows? Maybe if it does keep burying itself down there and sinking, I don't, I don't know about whether it's sunk that far or not, but if it does no, keep going either. down, that's probably a good thing because it'll end up being buried down there. Well, the whole point is you're trying to get it. You're trying to get it to contain it because it won't shut off. It's like a sun on the planet. Yeah, but if it goes down into the magma and, and towards the Earth's core... Yeah, we don't know. It disappears, basically. We hope, yeah. Yeah. We would assume. Yeah. But uh, we don't know. Like, we know that if the core is going down to the Earth and it hit the water tables, any kind of water tables down there, any kind of water... Yeah. Well, a liter of water expands 1,100 feet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. In, a se yeah. in a split second. So this core will cause, say if this core went down and hit a couple of hundred gallons, that would cause a detonation, but it won't change because the core, it, it's able to bind itself into that 9,000 degree Fahrenheit. I don't know how that would work out. Sorry, folks, I made a few noises there on you. But um, they turned off the mobile survey in Victoria on the 22nd of March, 2011, Vancouver, March 24, 2011, Haida Gwaii, which is Queen Charlotte's, the northern... Canada, March 24, 2011, and around Vancouver, March 25th, they shut it off. Saanich Peninsula, here in British Columbia, March 22nd, and March the 19th and the 20th, they were out there flying along the coastline. You'll find those studies below if you look for the link where Health Canada. That was fun. Hot particles bombarded the west coast of U.S. and Canada. So what does that mean? Hot particles. Yeah, is that is like it? bananas or is that yeah. like potatoes? Is that like... Uh, so they're, they're, Are they party particles? Are is they party <laughs> particles? And these hot particles, if you ingest these, they're, they're um, very active, right? So they give you a really big tumor. And you ingest some other particles of iodine or cesium or strontium, they give you different types of tumors. So all of these will cause different... Like strontium will cause leukemias. Cesium will cause yeah. heart disease. Um, uh, all of them will go into your muscles all of them will go get sequestered into your organs and they do they are attracted because 
electri electrically charged particles <coughs> and your body of course runs on electricity and they stick they're so small one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter you know the, the micron sizes they seem insignificant but uh, just a single particle will cause cancer to grow as we've seen with the uh, the puppy killer dr uh, raymond gilmitty remember that yeah, yeah, he had so, 80 studies so of puppies. What, you know, they, effectively they, sh they shut down any monitoring. Right. Uh, whether they're doing anything on the quiet, nobody knows. Right. And well, uh, they're doing it for their uh, own. And yeah. they're doing very, very, very limited testing on fish products, which are actually imported fish products. And it's not the stuff in our own ocean. And we've talked about that quite a bit. Yeah. That's a good point. Which then, which they're not testing directly that we know of no we don't know what they're doing well we know they're taking our money and spending it yeah and so we know they're going to protect themselves and they need to know themselves so they're going to be able to look in but we know that there's a national security uh, issue where they can't tell people about it and because it doesn't get reported that way then universities don't got to do yeah. it to models yeah. schools don't got to tell children and then to stay you have home. to realize the government the federal government in canada has effectively put the kibosh on any research and uh, access to information over the last in, couple of years in over the last couple Heavily. of years that's in, a good point in any sort of scientific because they know right away well right? it's not it's probably it's not just right. for that they don't want anything to interfere with commerce right <laughs> right and so if you were like in Russia they evacuated 7500 communities so obviously that affected a lot of commerce, a lot of businesses yeah. in that area in the late 40s. And then they made 9,000 square miles, which are still off limits. Because they'll tell you it's contaminated with cesium, but to, you know it doesn't travel without the uranium and without the plutonium. Yeah. And so that's never going away. And so that's why they made a decision. But also got to realize that that 9,000 square kilometers of heavy radioactive, radioactive material will spread out. Every time there's a storm, every time it rains, every time there's convection or evaporation. Yeah, every time a bird moves around. Right, yeah. and then the migratory animals coming yeah. through those sites are going to be spreading out. Just for really good points. These these sites, even though we've seen mainstream media come out and said that they're habitable, right, that there's a lot of animals, the animals have taken it over since then, right? It's actually not that way at all. If you go look up uh, radiation, uh, Radchick, up at the Climate Viewer, or Radchick, and you'll find links below this video, folks. Uh, she looks for mutations, so uh, in plants, but she's also really keenly yeah. aware of animals. Yeah. And um, personally, I mean, if somebody said to me, "Well, if I was from Hanford, or let's say the Bikini Atoll, where they did all the atomic testing right. in, in the Pacific," right. well, oh, it's clean now. Do you want to go back there? Yeah. I'd be like. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> right, and he put out these propaganda pieces, most of it, well, it's like a banana, or it's like a back yeah. getting an x-ray, yeah. or it's like a chest x-ray, or it's like walking in the sun yeah. kind of radiation. But it's, uh, those types of radiation, of course, got nothing to do with what we talk about, but they always try to, yeah. no matter what, they relentlessly shove yeah. that out there. And I got a 20-minute uh, uh, happy anniversary Happy third anniversary to the pro-nuclear uh, PR firms out there. Video ready to go out <laughs> after. It's already rendered. I just it didn't rend finish rendering until it came on well, air, so I didn't you know, get it they, In the I'll end, it gets it down to you know whether you want to call them major corporations or all the vested interests and so on. The handful they, of them, yeah. they they're using this planet as a toilet. They're just flushing stuff. Yeah, it's ironic you say there. that, and yeah. it doesn't really matter what it is, whether it's nuclear stuff or just general industrial pollution that they don't care and they're not held accountable for Nobody's, environmental concerns you can't hold them accountable because they're they got corporate personhood well you right? can hold the corporation accountable right but uh, that takes a lot of money to play that game and they put their money in offshore accounts and then they use that to buy lobbyists and judges yeah, yeah, and politicians yeah, 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 yeah. and lawmakers and so it's really hard to hold them accountable and if you do hold them accountable, look at Google, get a half a billion dollar fine because they're really naughty. No one gets a criminal record. Nobody goes to jail. All of them continue on the career paths they took. But if we go out and get drunk driving, we can't get a job here, can't get a job there. It's endless repercussions. They go out and get a criminal record. The corporation takes the money from the offshore accounts. The corporation already put all your communities 
on the shelf by getting rid of all most of the mom yeah. and pop operations that originally existed to play yeah. stem oh, yeah. like McDonald's restaurants are hard to yeah. survive with a McDonald's I mean, in your town. My, my nephew was working uh, working off offshore in Nigeria right? right and he went on shore there and he looked around and he it's said really the bad, level yeah. of pollution there from is the it? oil companies operating there is just he said you just wouldn't believe it you just would not believe it right uh, and uh, I mean Somalia the reason we have the piracy in Somalia is because the Italian mob was sinking ships and dropping barrels of radioactive waste off that coastline for a few decades. Well, that wasn't the only reason. That was because well, the fish were radioactive. That's what yeah, they but get also up. international fishing fleets came in and robbed and, it and stole and everything. Absolutely, stripped yeah all the inshore That's fishery true. Good of point. all their products. But they stopped doing it when they were dragging up barrels of radioactive yeah. waste. They were like, oh, the extra yeah. stage left, sent over to Canada. And so. That was a good point. I lost track of what we were going to talk about. But let's go to another headline. Because that's, that's easier just to jump. Let's jump. High concentration of radiation hit U.S. and Canada. The plume was rich in cesium-137 and close to the surface from Vancouver southward. Also Hawaii and Florida. Now Hawaii, they found uranium in Hawaii right away. Uranium-238. Within uh, about three weeks, they had discovered yeah. quite yeah. a bit of it. And they had found massive contaminations in Hawaii because that's right in the middle of it all. And Hawaii really is a wasteland. There was 600% uh, in the first two weeks or first week showed up in the milk. Right, so cows accumulates in breasts yeah. of women too, right? So when they're breastfeeding their babies, <laughs> it's a really insidious effect that the radiation, especially iodine had originally, uh, was that it... It gets in the breast, so when a child is breastfeeding, they're, they're getting a he much heavier. All the milk has to get ionized as it goes past all that radiation. So it's a really insidious thing, and same thing with animals. And so that shows up in butter and milk and dairy products and ice creams. And, you know, it's not a, not bad enough. you got the GMO. You're competing with the GMO, and now you got the radiation. So the GMO doesn't allow you to uptake nutrients because of the glossophates and the formaldehydes because they're engineered in the, the food, you, as you well know, never had none of this before. And as you follow much, and you used to grow about an acre of land every year of your own vegetables, Roger? Well, not, not quite an acre, but enough. Big, big enough. Um, big huge. Than, bigger than most people. And you bottle an amazing yeah. amount of stuff every year, right? You stored it up and you yeah. ate it, you grew it yourself. Yeah. And if the squirrels didn't steal it, or the deer, or the bears, or, or the bears, <laughs> and uh, but you're always guarding against that to stop them from stealing your food. But when you come ashore, you remember we were looking trying to find ice cream, and you went to every supermarket, right? And you only found one ice cream that wasn't GMO. I don't remember if that's well, the story. Didn't, didn't have a product in it which was probably a genetically modified organism because you can't. Any time it contains soya products, right? It's got can't take a chance. You can't take a chance on it no. because there is virtually. I I know a lot of soya products come from South America, and they're not necessarily all GMO. And in fact, Brazil, when there was a kickback against GMO products, um, right. Brazil did quite well because their stuff was not uh, GMO organisms. Yeah, Brazil was planning on. Uh, supply in India or something, right? Go With non-GMO products? Japan, actually, I think was it, it was, ironically, yeah. Yeah, Japan. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me jump on another topic here, just because. That's how I roll, cuz. And so we're just, there's so many of these. Um, let me see what I got here. Uh, oh. Let's go into the real naughty stuff, the hard stuff to talk about. Heart attacks, radiation. I got two in a row here. Fukushima worker has a heart attack by working at Reactor 1. Remember Reactor 1 had a million sievers? 500 sievers is going to kill you in less than two weeks. You get the dose when you went walk past it. What's a million sievers going to do to you? Well, it'll drop you right on the spot like that worker at 31 years old in front of Reactor number 1. No one should have been there, see? Radiation around Fukushima on March the 14th, three days after the accident happened, nearing levels where humans vomit uncontrollably 
and hair is stripped from the bodies. And there's a bunch of women uh, in the documentary here, they lost all their hair. They lost their fingernails, yeah. they lost their teeth, yeah. and they were, they were in the Fukushima prefecture. The plume was suspended near the ground and it floated all the way to Tokyo. Yeah, you know, so it got a little bit more dispersed by the time it got to, to Tokyo. But there's one particular uh, plume. Villages all the way to Tokyo during that period got hammered. Yeah, and, and reported on it. Concerto Radio just recently reported New Mexico was chemtrailed uh, really heavily. They had massive uh, what, uh, readings on the radiation. They got chemtrailed, and almost two weeks, the stuff stayed about 10 feet off the ground like a fog, but it wasn't like any fog they've ever seen before. That was just came out this morning. And it just hung there and clung, clung to everything. And that's a mitigation that they do for radiation. They've done that during Chernobyl. They, that's the backup plan for all countries was to go out and spray regions that aggregate the isotopes and the radioactive particles in the atoms and try, and sink it, and try the to sink it back down and hold yeah. it down, right? And 90,000 ships on the ocean burning bunker fuel, will those particles, because it's so inefficient, will they grab on the radiation? Because uh, that, I have no idea. Right, you remember the studies I yeah. showed you how it gets liberated into the troposphere yeah. Yeah. and the upper atmosphere and can stay up there for like yeah. 10 years, but will all of that stuff will rain out and fall down. The radiation does the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so there's a plausible thing that a lot of that gets carried down. Mm -hmm. But the isotopes that are coming out and hitting the ocean all the way to the ocean floor, they're popping out energy for the next 4.5 billion years if it's uranium. But then the cold currents will bring that right back up to the surface with the nutrients because that's how the ocean works. And that's how the, the phytoplankton at the surface are fed. The cold nutrients are brought up and they feed the phytoplankton where they're, the dirt babies at the surface. They create all 50% of the oxygen out of that ocean and they are the basis, the very basis of the food chain in the ocean. And so what I'm suggesting is that even if it falls all the way down, it's, if you took an isotope and put it in a glass of water, you got around 75 million to 100 million phytoplankton in a glass of salt water, that isotope will kill everything in that water. You can dump that in a half a liter, it'll kill everything. You can dump that into a liter, it'll kill everything of salt water. All in, Plus there's trillions of other creatures. And so the isotopes that are filling up the ocean, they're not going to lose their energy. They're going around. Think of popcorn. Well, if you drop the isotope in a glass of salt water with 75 million or 100 million phytoplankton and trillions of creatures, they're dying like popcorn as this pops releases energy. It could be releasing energies of 500 beats a second, radioactive uh, alphas or gammas or betas or, you know, depending, because these MOX fuels were extraordinary concoctions. And then you had the sulfur, urethal, peroxide yeah. compounds that ingested uh, the radioactive atoms and particles yep. and turn them into little nuclear engines which we I mean, you talked about quite a lot. Well, some of those particles obviously will get trapped in deep ocean sediment. Yeah, but about two percent apparently is what you're saying. That's all? Yeah. They're not salutable, those particular yeah. ones. Yeah. In water, so they yeah. generally don't even stay in water. They can get re-liberated till the end of time yeah. if it was uranium, 4.5 billion years longer than the life of the planet. But uranium I mean, the reason we got the core of the Earth is because the Earth is full of uranium, natural uranium, very low level radiation, but com combined, it put out so much energy and some, a lot of high stuff, it put out so much energy, that's how we created the core, and that's why the core is dear, is because of all the uranium that's in Earth. Everything on Earth is already acclimated to this low level, insignificant, indigenous, natural background radiation that has nothing to do with the equation, but because it's not ionized yet, it's not gone through a chain reaction, it never went through the fission yet, right? So it's coli, once it goes through that, it's a different uranium, yeah. it's a different, yeah. and plutonium is man-made, right? Yeah. Mad-made, I said that mad time. Made. I think I was right on the first one, not man-made, but mad-made, right? Yeah. But, yeah, well, from that we also know how easy it is to bring uranium up to the surface because they've been doing some fracking in a couple of spots for oil and gas, and, 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 the uranium. and it's been bringing uranium back up into the water supply. Wow. Yeah, we were talking about that yesterday a little bit. Yeah. Was it yesterday or the yeah. day before? And, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Two high school students die in the same school. Two high school students in the same school died at once. 
I mean, that's a frightening headline. That's extraordinary. Seven people died on a single shopping street in Fukushima. That's an amazing headline. Seven people died on a single street. What did they die that's of? That's got to be the, What did they die of? Uh, well, of course, Japan is very closed. Well, they're just strange deaths is what they got here. Like, how, un how, yeah. use how unusual is it to have two people die on the same street? Well, how on a shopping street? Yeah. How unusual is it to have seven people? Pretty unusual. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm just saying. When you add it yeah. all all up together, uh, reporters said he heard the uh, ambulances coming to Fukushima plant at least ten times a day, right? Because people at Fukushima, the ambulance would come take them to Tepco's hospital. Tepco would say, "Fuck you," that's a fact. And the homeless, well, the graveyards are radiated from all the dead homeless that they put in there. Another Fukushima cleanup worker dies. Um, birds are unable to fly. Uh, some are unable to read. Right, the the homeless are bringing in there under age. Right, they were faking IDs for children to come in and work at Fukushima because they're monsters, because they're freaks, because they're the worst people on the planet. CC 137 immediately attacks the heart muscle. It's not slow acting. These are all headlines from universities, institutions, from uh, media all around the world. Fireman dies after working in Fukushima, vomited blood, died of renal failure. 40% of Fukushima visitors so show internal exposure to radiation. 40% internal. So every one of them will get cancer. But 6 out of 10 children, according to NBC, like we started the show off, has diabetes now. Four out of ten, or six out of ten children tested for diabetes had diabetes, and this is uh, what happens when you're highly irradiated. Apparently, over a thousand nuclear workers, uh, internal radiation, ten thousand counts a minute, May the twenty third, two thousand and eleven. So, like when people say that this never affected anybody or this didn't hurt anybody, that nobody died or that there's no repercussion. Then all of these people in the next couple of years will have serious cancers, every one of them, right? And if they have children, or if they brought the contaminations home, or if they were having more children now, they're, they're, you know, you would expect to see deformities. Uh, five Fukushima workers received fatal doses of radiation February 22, 2012. October 11, worker dies by decontaminating in Fukushima. Extreme increase of morality. Mortality caused by cardiac diseases. Death rates might give the creeps to some people. There was an extra 12,695 people, up 12.5% of cardiac arrest after Fukushima. That's huge, an extra 12,000 cardiac arrest. That's very big, yeah. That's a huge number. Yeah, there's a lot of people, it was still a huge number. Uh, Fukushima Daiichi worker dies that had been preparing cover for unit number three. Unit number three, of course, was the Fox. Fox. Mox fuel. Uh, Japanese government looking for kamikaze decontamination workers for the Fukushima prefecture. Come on, get it, big tough guys. You got an enemy you can't see. You got an enemy that is invisible, that you can't hear it, you can't smell it, you can't even taste it. Do it for the emperor. Do it for the emperor who's in the hospital having heart surgery and got renal failure. Japanese medical expert, 51% of the kids are contaminated with cesium-137. 51%, that's a different hospital. And some of their clothing is extremely high levels of gamma rays. Children with over 11 becquels a kilogram of cesium starts to see heart problems. Now, they keep raising the acceptable levels of radiation in your food. And 11 becquels, it, you know, that it's... Um, over a uh, hundred times that right now to most of North America and Japan has lost its friggin mind anyway right J Japan really is uh, okay uh, 5,000 new plant workers suffered internal radiation exposure after visiting Fukushima May 22nd March April May so a little over two months a little over eight week later 5,000 workers that will get serious cancer Serious cancer. Because the detonation was all over that site. Unit 3 was a nuclear detonation. Don't forget that, okay? We cover that all the time. 
Number three was 100% verified a nuclear detonation. It may not look like your standard mushroom cloud nuclear well, detonation. Well, because they only had the one, yeah. the one footage, I think yeah. it was. Yeah. But then uh, the Goddard's uh, done the studies on that three different models of the plume. And they showed the mushroom cloud. They showed the speeds. They showed the expansions. Yeah. They, they showed the, the actual makeup of it. And then they have another university show that dispersed five miles up, and another one said it went even higher, nine miles up uh, in, into the air. Now, of course, the jet stream doesn't, you don't need to go up that high. So that means as it falls back down, the jet stream is sucking it yeah, along, and right? Pushing if it and round the world it goes. Yeah, and of course, the jet stream at 100 miles an hour, 2,400 yeah. miles in 24 hours. Well, the ocean's only around 5,500 miles, two and a half days. Yeah. It's... And dead, but it never stopped coming out of there. So it's the equivalent of pouring dye into the river without stopping. Is the same thing that went up into the jet stream as is for the ocean. That and right and as AP headline showed today, it's still spewing into the atmosphere because you can't do anything with it. If you try to contain it, you'll blow everything up. You never get back on the site. You have to be able to stay on the site. There's only so many things they can do. And because it's consuming every all the rods that are around it are also always getting sucked down on top of these cores. And I got I got the headlines there about that stuff, but we're not gonna to touch that here tonight. Uh, ninety five thousand counts per minute in uh, hang on. I lost track. Uh, minima minimi minimi soma city. 95,000 counts per minute. You can't live in that environment where people are. The government had in TEPCO, and the gov which is the government, created 5,000 models in the first two months. That's around 96 models a day of the dispersal of the aerosol from the accidents and never released it to the public. And the models that we, most of the models that we're even seeing today were based upon the releases from number one reactor only. only yeah. Not the fuel pool on top of that's yeah. missing. Not the number three with all the missing fuel yeah. pools. Not the detonation at number four. And not number two. And, and not the number two, which uh, is extraordinary. That one stayed intact, but it's a 100% meltdown yeah. and has gone off down into the planet somewhere. Police officer dies from radiation in Fukushima. Uh, mom, uh, hospital refuses to provide medical care to children. That's because TEPCO, that's how cruel TEPCO is, won't even help the parents because they're going to lose money. Right? It's all about it's all about them making their profits, their quarterly profits, their huge profits. <coughs> how are we doing, folks? Let's come over and say hi to a few people. We're into a two-hour show today, if anybody's not familiar. It's an extraordinary one. I don't know if I can go to the whole two hours. Hello. I still look pretty pudgy in that video. I don't know what Google's trying to do to me, trying to make me look like I gain weight. So I stretched out my video again on me. Arseholes. And, right? <laughs> Friggin' arseholes. Three melted cores, Tony Troy says. Three melted cores burning to the earth, and there's nothing anyone can do about it. This is the issue. Lisa says, Did Chernobyl kill us all? Are ready? Tony. Well, Chernobyl, kill us all. She's talking Chernobyl, kill us all. Keep dreaming, buds. What's your IQ? No. Oh, is that Chernobyl a won't kill us all. Is that a... We got a troll on here or something? Seeing as there's this... Seem, seeming at, seeing as the is a overpopulation... Okay, that's a tongue twister. And an unsustainable population of this planet... Right now, World War II, smallpox did nothing, we would not be alive. Uh, thanks, Troy. I don't know what to make it. Did Chernobyl kill us? Oh, Chernobyl's one third the size of Fukushima. Chernobyl, they went through 600,000 workers, got medals. People went out on the roof for 15 seconds, not 15 uh, months, like at Fukushima with the homeless. Chernobyl was one third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima. Chernobyl didn't have any fuel pools missing on the roof of it. Chernobyl was a sacrifice of over, up to a million actually, but over 600,000 got medals. It's a completely different ball game. Chernobyl apparently did kill an extra thousand people. Uh, according to all the studies, there was 30,000 papers 
declassified and put into the Engli English uh, language. And let me see what we got going on over here. Let me get rid of that. Hang on, folks. Once a troll, always a troll. Just a troll. I'm going to go down to the bottom of the page. What's going on here? Oh, it's going to play that game again. Well, let me sign in. Sign me out again. That's four times. You can't do anything without signing into Google over and over and over during the live stream. Right? And so what that does is you can't you can't do any other functions because when you open up another window, yeah. it tries to get you to sign in. Again. Yeah. And so you got to go click it and click, but that slows down the stream. So let's keep going. We're still on a roll here. Still rolling. Still going strong. Still hating on Tepco. Still fucking hating on Tepco. Ah, look at Tepco. What the hell? Yeah, so Tepco. Oh, yeah, Tepco. I'm, I know I'm goofy sometimes, you know. That's my Tepco puppet. Ooh. Yeah, it's a troll. It was a troll. Gone now. All right, I'll close his account and get another one. We had one there last night with like six six accounts ready to go. Don't don't keep blocking me, but they're calling me all kinds of names. They won't listen to anything you got to say. They won't argue any yeah. of the facts. They just they're just really salacious uh, comments. That's James Garrow. Uh, James Nichols says, not James Nichol, but Nate James Garrow. That's pretty funny. Hi, Mandy. Uh, let's say hi to a few people. Diamond Dog, Chernobyl, Scottish Girl. Don't let them get under your skin, folks. You're the Fukushima hounds. You're the hounds of Fukushima. Sort it out. I'll put that down there. I'll bust his head later. Sort it out. The troll thinks I'm sitting here making it all up. Somebody hire that guy. I wish I could make it all up. Woo! I'd be writing books now. I'd be writing fucking books all over the place. Hi, Scotty. Uh, girl, Starlight, Stacy Jane, Dana, toss the bike. Toss that bike. I'm just waiting for the troll to pop back up. What? Hi, Mama Knox. Anybody? Any questions? Who is Dana, toss that bike? Uh, don't say nothing about him. He's got like... 50 videos of him with different handguns and everything there. <laughs> don't want to piss that guy off. No, I, I don't want to piss him off. Just curious. What do you want? Yeah, one of those things. Yeah. No, he was just commenting. That's the name. He, he changed the name to his site to Dana Toss the Boy after we beat up the boy here. Amthurs, uh, Amthurs says, Fuck Tepco. Ignore the trolls. Keep going. Hi, Mark. Masterialization. Mark Busher. Hi Mark, 1111, Dub Ford, thank you. There's not 4,000 chemicals in my cigarette. Send you help mail, I hate mail, <coughs> Dana Durnford at <coughs> live.com anyway. I was just reading a brief synopsis, there's a, I can't remember. That's my name by the way, if you I can't remember the name of the writer. Um, uh, she just put out a book called The Sixth Extinction. Right, I caught that last night actually. And uh, but that that was I actually watched a video. Basically, of it. all the things we're doing are just accumulating more and more and more. It's just you know, fuck everything. Well, I mean, we got to deal with what we got to deal with. The yeah. most important things first. And but that's a really good point because I did catch that, Roger. And anybody got any questions? I'm just going to check and see if we got any questions and we're going to go hammer away again. <laughs> Blocked again, creeps. <laughs> That's okay. Don't worry, dipshit. I mean, uh, did Chernobyl kill us all, part two? How many of these accounts you got sitting there? Let's have your will against my will. <laughs> see who wins that one. Well, you got to hide away like a coward for it. Why are you, why are you got to hide away behind a ghost account? Why do you just make a video like I'm doing? Sit there and state your claim. Say, Dana, that headline wasn't completely accurate. I went and checked it all out. I got Ken Buesler to sign an affidavit. 
that uh, bananas, it was like bananas. I got uh, Jay Cullen to say that it was like bananas, Dana, so I'll leave it. Dana, well, I actually got eight years training on uranium-238 and uranium used in wars. Okay, I've watched every documentary out there. I have most of them, in, if not all of them, in my collections. I spent uh, almost eight years listening to lectures, four years nonstop, from Harvard and Yale and Berkeley and MIT and Stanford and Oxford and the Commonwealth Club and any other country in the languages that I didn't speak, but somebody had translated it, and then there was quite a bit of that. I have an amazing collection, and so I am trained. I'm trained from the best on the planet, the best the planet has to offer. And if the internet didn't exist, then I wouldn't be able to do that. Because the internet exists, that was easy to do, and anybody could do that. And I came on board early in that game. And so, yes, I am trained. You know, I got 11,000 articles on Fukushima collected. And uh, that's, that's unimaginable, okay? You haven't got that, that troll, because otherwise you wouldn't be arguing. You'd be here making videos like I'm doing, trying to save the, you know, the future from being destroyed by the nuclear industry by a handful of corporations. Yeah, okay, Candace, I hear you. Okay, Amters, yeah, okay. I won't apologize for fucking smoking. I know we're magic. Smiling blocks the radiation. Remember that. Uh, uh, where's that other troll that was here earlier? I got a block Nubu. The Nubu Magic uh, 2012. He he blogs the same as I do, right? Yeah. And so whenever there's a new story, he'll come out and blog it out. Yeah. But he can also take all of his other blogs, right, and use that information. Say, hey, don't forget about this. Yeah. And because yeah. he's covered it. Yeah. Right, so he's getting really, you know, really top notch, uh, certainly for quite a long time because he done that so much. Yeah. And so when he makes a video, it makes sense because he's able to drag in all the past headlines yeah. and keep yeah. them in the context because most people see the headline, they don't understand all that other stuff. Yeah. And so we need a lot of people like that, right? And he's doing extremely uh, good because he just sticks, to, like me, I'm crazy. Right? No well, room, no room it's don't the only put way to keep the information out there, you just yeah. keep hammering away at it. So. Yeah, he does really good on each yeah. video because he doesn't, he's not crazy like I am, right? No bro. Deep inside, you probably want to be, but you know, is that it takes a certain person to get away with it. Where's the trolls to? Bring on the trolls. Come on, give us another account. That's only fucking three today. Okay, let me get back to talking. And there's a lot of links below the video that will make sense to a lot of people. And let's get rid of all the deaths and heart attack because we just covered that pretty good. We're moving right along. Hour and 17 minutes. Got to try to pick it up a little tiny bit. I'm going to roll down here and we'll just jump in and out of these numbers. Frig, I got so much here. And we'll start at uh, 75 mile mark outside of Fukushima, march west across Japan. But we'll keep talking in between it, Roger, if you feel like it. Half a million beckles of radioactive cesium 75 miles from Fukushima plant. So would that mean that there's uh, probably a half a million beckles all the way there, or is it just that one spot? Oh, it's got to be that one spot. Yeah, Absolutely. Just <laughs> yeah. And it was centered right over the USS whatever it was that was yeah, hanging was, around out there, which actually wasn't 75 miles away. It, it was, was a, it you, was a you mile heard, offshore. Yeah, because you watched it, uh, yeah, one of those yeah. people that I showed you. The, she was saying we were a mile off the coastline. Yeah. They were pulling people. The USS Ronald Reagan was actually right off the coastline one mile, and it was plucking people into the ocean swept away by the tsunami, okay? That's why all those helicopters were used. That's why they sent that one over there because it had all those helicopters. That's, and they had to change 12 helicopter engines, remember that, or was it 16, I can't remember. But it was at least 12 helicopter engines, they had to pull them out and put them on, a, on the Hanford nuclear waste site, ship them to that yeah. waste site, because they were contaminated. Yeah. Because that's what radiation does. Uh, over four million Beckles, a square meter in a major city, of uh, just, you know, they're talking about iodine 131 and cesium 137. But of course, those types of numbers, you're not, it's not going to be iodine, it's not going to be cesium, it's going to contribute to it. They did find that, but they're only looking for gammas, and they just say, ah, it's cesium, or it's friggin' iodine in the report. So they're looking for the, the, the counts. 
And so they need really sophisticated equipment, really sophisticated technology to figure out exactly what it is at that kind of account. But, it, you know, the iodine don't travel by itself. It has all its sisters yeah. and daughters. And so does the cesium, so does the strontium, so does the uranium, so does the plutonium, the americium, the neptunium, and all these other... Uh, thorium was detected uh, 100 miles from Fukushima Mount Down. Melt, Mount Down. Meltdown, that's the daughter product of uh, uranium. High levels of radioactivity, 150, Japan says the air 150 kilometers from Fukushima plant is as radioactive as the air they're reporting from close to the meltdown. So that would be the plumes coming through. July the 20th, it was still hemorrhaging out of there, so they're still filling the air up, right? Yeah, and it's still hemorrhaging out of there. Yeah, and like AP reported yeah. today, not only from the air, but also in the ocean, of course. Not only the ocean, but also the air. Radioactive material in Tokyo, 170,000 becquels in a kilogram uh, of slag. So, like, if you're going to go square meter, you multiply that by 28. So, when you got per uh, becquels a kilogram in soil or in slag or something like that, to get a square like the size of your table, multiply it by 28, and you'll get the square meter numbers. Worked out here yesterday on the old calculator. Comes with the computers. Fallout from Fukushima causing problems 180 kilometers away. Here's another headline. 188 kilometers from Fukushima. A mysterious reddish radioactive substance. Alpha particles, 200 counts per minute. Diachi's Elementary, 4 million becquels a square meter of cesium. What about uh, just 30 times more of that than strontium? So uh, 120 million becquels of strontium per square meter in a school in Chiba, 20 kilometers south of uh, Tokyo. So tw uh, elementary school, 20 kilometers from Tokyo, and Tokyo is what, almost 220 kilometers away or yeah. something. Uh, 4 million becquels of just cesium. Right, what about the iodine? Uh, forget about that one, but what about the strontium? Just 30 times more. You can't I have- I don't think they had enough testing equipment anywhere to go around. No, the fire reports, and you'll find those links below, folks, if you're looking for it, the, the, the fire reports, the email releases, a lot of it's redacted, Yeah. but they talk about that over and over yeah, and yeah. over, right? And they bury it. They literally buried it, uh, those, that kind of information. Tokyo area turns out to be Japanese newspaper. Tokyo area as contaminated as Fukushima. Air samples in Tokyo, 270 times more contaminated with cesium-137 than the global weapons follow peak. That's a hideous thing when you think about the global weapons, right? Yeah. Because they're using that today. Oh, it's probably not. It's probably not from Fukushima, Dana. It's probably from the global weapons fallout. Where's that headlines? Hang on here. I got a doozy there for everybody. I'll never find that again. Well, why would you suddenly have 227 times yeah. levels when probably uh, they've been measuring the uh, fallout from weapons testing for a long time? Oi! Oi! I'm looking for my headline. Uh, you would get... Let me type that in. Let me read that out to people. You would get... Hang on! A little old slow computers, I'm just ready to go. <coughs> okay, I got it. You would get more radiation. From a banana. Let me see if I get this straight. You get more radiation if you were closer to man-made radioactive contaminated areas and a lot less if you're not close to it. That's friggin' brilliant! Do you really need to go to Harvard or Yale to work that one out? You would get more radiation if you're on a plane with a smoke detector at 50,000 feet getting a CAT scan and a dental x-ray while drinking a glass of water with 7,500 becquels of potassium-40 in it and a bad tub of ocean water and rocks releasing natural uranium-238, natural radon with the plane's curtains up eating a banana than you would if you were standing in the middle of any spot where man-made radioactive material has fallen out of the fucking sky! Oh! And you would get even less radiation if you were on the space station than you, if you would if you stood in the middle of the Fukushima Daiichi Military Industrial Complex's nuclear plant. And you cannot make uranium-238 yellow cake from bananas. 
And if you do get radiation, if you do get radiation, fallout is probably from nuclear testing in the 50s and 60s, but don't worry, all you gotta do is smile, and the radiation cannot hurt you, because it's like pouring a spoon of water in the ocean, trying to measure the level changes of the ocean. Did I get that right? <laughs> Woo! I mean, that's how difficult this is, right? That these are the lies, the manipulations. And that's why people are so confused and they don't know what to do. And when you try to go out and listen to the people that are put up on the pedestal, like Ken Buesler and Jay Cullen and Dr. Chad, Dr. Raymond yeah. Gilmetti and the House of Cards that it is, yeah. that it is you know, that's, that's all they got is their bananas. Now they censored Ken Buesler yesterday in USA Today, right? They put him up there oh, for yeah. for the, the the eve of the anniversary, yeah. and they actually censored all the other shit that he says in every other one. He, last week he was up on BBC talking yeah. about yeah. potassium forty. The week before yeah. that he was Deep Sea News talking about potassium yeah. forty. The week before that he was on um, the LA so Times. So why did they censor him? And this time they didn't let. Well, they just because a couple of days before that we had put out two big videos oh. where we tore into him. And saying this is outrageous, is. but see they were using him. He came on board, Ken Buesler, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. He came on board. You go looking at his uh, recent lectures, and he he says it a number of times. Well, you know, I was down at down at uh, Chernobyl, and then I was off doing my own thing, and then when Fukushima happened, I had to get back up to speed, and I came right on board. And he'd been running around doing lectures ever since. He was the first scientist off the coast of Fukushima. But I mean, surely the fuck Woods Hole Institution got at least one nuclear expert there. Why did they ro roll out an oceanographic uh, person like Ken, who has a history of outrageous lies and fabrications, misrepresentation, and being a stuttering prick? Um, he's, he's he surely must be raking it in on the lecture circuit. How many how many lectures has he done in the last? He doesn't year? stop. Yeah, he doesn't stop, and like now he's up on BBC. Now he's up on fucking National Geographic, and they just they don't even fact check, right? They yeah. just put him out to everything he says, and he talks about, yeah. well, you know, the the standards for drinking water in America is yeah. seventy five hundred, and so some places is actually ninety thousand becquerels of potassium forty in the drinking water is an acceptable standard. That's why we're allowed to put ninety that much becquerels of potassium or. Uh, CCM into the oceans per cubic yeah. uh, because it's legal in your drinking water. So he just, right, he just mixes it up in each sentence, everywhere he goes he does that. And so he's acclimating the public that the new limits are 10,000 becquerels uh, just as safe of CCM-137 uh, uh, is the equivalent, yeah. animosity equivalent of potassium-40. Yeah. yeah. Hello, Fuki Ham. Stetson, hi Stetson. Sergeant. Smurf boy. Anybody? Mama Knox says magic. Didn't they also use Stutnik in uh, Fukushima? Yes, yeah, Stutnik went out and, and infected a whole lot. That was created by Israel and Americans. And that got released onto the internet so we could see other nuclear reactors melting down. Hi, Lunar. John Townsend. Here's a story. U.S. Ronald Reagan was trying to provide power to TEPCO. That's why they were so close. What do you think? No, I listened to the testimony from the sailors. They were pulling people out of the ocean. Survivors from the tsunami that were swept out to sea. Remember, 18,000 are still missing. Uh, some of them, there's a sumo wrestler yeah. out there somewhere on his way to Canada. And big, fat, bloated, uh, apparently. Radiated, he's good. So reactor, uh, just in from Eno's, reactor melted down four hours after M9.0 quake. Tanks hunt, or H-U-N-F, H-U-N-T yeah. hunt. Well, it was the, it, Stuxnet didn't have anything to do with the reactor there. It had, it was literally the earthquake and the tsunami that whacked it. Yeah, that earthquake, yeah. Uh, that, that tore apart the country, right? That lifted up. Communities that wrecked uh, hundred thousand homes, that wrecked that whole plant. Yeah. It broke its backs. That the, the reactors melted down before the tsunami got there. We're in the meltdown apparently. Yeah, because the right? earthquake For, did it. So hi Kate, and folks, Kate's got a uh, Fukushima Hound uh, uh, chat room set up. You want to go over and check that out? You'll find a link on her site. 
and Kate uh, is one of the graduates from the Hounds of Fukushima crash course. How to destroy, how to destroy the nuclear apologists. Hi, Real Night Writer. Anybody got any questions? I'll try to keep my eyes out. All those corpses tangled in the fishing lines headed to Canada. Okay, well let's jump over. Uh, let's go down. Let me run through about. Uh, let's run past Tokyo. Krypton 85. Government simulation shows radioactive plume of Krypton 85 over Tokyo March the 15th. Four days after. There's a simulation that came out. 300,000 Beckwolds of radioactive iodine deposited in areas near Tokyo for the end of March. Can I put kettle on, Raj? Uh, high radiation levels near Tokyo linked to Fukushima. Rain caused 29 million Beckwolds. A square meter in the soil, says the government, which has almost doubled their last test. Uh, that's near Tokyo. 29 million Beckwolds in the soil, 220 kilometers away from the meltdown. Remember, the winds, the prevailing winds are from the west. That's where Tokyo is, into the west. And that the government, I got a whole bunch of headlines for the the presentation that I'm doing for this that I've been working on hard. Tokyo drinking water unsafe for infants. Let me get past all the Tokyo. Oh, that was a big one. Let me go back to that one. A million Beckwells a square meter. Tokyo soil. Just test everywhere they went. It was just 1.5 million. Tokyo near a church. There was a hundred Seavers at a supermarket in the supermarket. A hundred fucking Seavers in the supermarket. Excuse the the French Canadian. Dr. Fon Geranium Zirconium Tokyo's residents feel fingernails. Zirconium came off the cladding of the assemblies. There was 3,450 assemblies in each of the reactors. Let me say that to you again. So that's a quarter million rods. 3,450 assemblies in the reactors that are melted down and missing. Each assembly has 80 rods. I think that that's uh, 300,000 yeah. almost yeah. rods just in the cores. The missing fuel pools over number one is missing a single fuel pool, but number three is missing all the fuel pools. These were 10 story buildings. Each fuel pool had 1,535 assemblies, which had around 80 uh, fuel rods in each of them. The rods are 12 feet long. They're made of weaponized military, military industrial complexes, uh, refined plutonium, refined uranium. From, and what I mean by that, from X missiles that were sitting in silos. And when Mach 4 exploded, a neutron beam was observed 13 times from Tokyo. There was 40,000 microsieverts per hour at a Tokyo supermarket. Um, Tokyo we're talking about. 235 was found in Chiba. Can't be detected by most Gardner counters. So there's another little hint for you. You can't detect it. I can hear your boots so clear, Roger. Any chance you can pop them off? Or that's really loud. Because that microphone is. You know, God, well, you got a microphone like that, you know. Yeah, you had your yeah, microphone yeah. before I got mine, right? Yeah. I just said I could really hear. Dum, dum, dum. Just do it a little quicker. Just do it like. Uh, never mind. Dance just no, I, I don't even <laughs> want to start. Da, 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 da. <laughs> okay, I can't get past Tokyo because I got so many headlines of Tokyo. Mama Knox's uh, Fukushima Hounds Freeform.net, folks. Kryptonite, now they are after Superman, says the Knight Rider. Pokey, why are you so mean to Kevin Blanche? Uh, Lori asses. So we got a little bit of scrapping going on. It's always good for the blood. Just air out the laundry. Get it off our chest. Cave Explorer, what do we got here? Radiation going to get into the freshwater in Canada because the freshwater estuaries that run into the ocean. Well, from the rain out, the rain out from the radioactive fallout, from the plumes that were carried over by the jet streams, that were relentlessly, continuously carried out by the jet streams. Once again, think of the jet streams and the ocean as a big river that's 2,000 miles long. And every day you're going to pour dye nonstop into that river. Every 1,440 minutes a day, you're going to pour dye into the river and you're going to wait three years but then you're going to go down river by helicopter and try to find a clean place where the dye hasn't penetrated because you never stop pumping dye into that river well we've done that to the atmosphere for three years and we've done it to the ocean for three years and there's no end in sight 
There's literally no end in sight in our lifespans. And hence the equation of what are we going to do about it, how are we going to get around this? Are we even going to try? Apparently not, when media has silenced the debate by putting forth uh, bootlick and lapdog, cheerleading people like Ken Buesler, Jay Cullen, Dr. Vicious, and Dr. Creepy, and Dr. Monster, and Doctors. And you can, you'll see the next video I'm putting out. I got all of those creatures into that video that's coming out right after this one is uploaded. I'm going to wait till this one uploads onto the channel. And because um, this one is two hours long, it's probably going to take an hour for this one to show up. So maybe I'll just pop up as soon as this one is uploaded. I'm going to start the upload on the other one that's 20 minutes long, so you got something to watch while you're waiting for this one to pop back up for people that are trying to uh, get back up to speed, because normally we don't do the show this early in the day, but uh, this is a fucka fucka fuka shima over as much as I can day, and so I've been working nonstop for days to try to come up with better ways to destroy these people, because uh, the sooner, you can't destroy them as soon enough. They need to wipe their genes off the planet corporate genes okay the corporate genes not kill the people and kill their children or family they're not saying anything like that they already done that to their own by continuing to live in that environment and lying about it not trying to deal with it not letting the international community come in there uh, hi everybody i'm gonna slow down and take a sip of my tea how we doing our 35 minutes our 30 woo we're, I'm, we're I'm almost here folks i'm going now Rogers are going to run away well, I'm sure everybody's glad to see you. We're shut drop boy, Roger. And we're trying to get a door. Their comments will show yours? up. No, I got the red one. Okay. So you can take off. You had a little chat. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got an hour and a half in on it. Oh, I wasn't here that long. You were, you? you were already on the way. I was only on the way for like yeah. five minutes or oh, something. Oh. Yeah. Okay. 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 Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Roger says bye. We'll get back to the screaming of the demons. I always think of it as... Um, what was that movie where they have that actor and she goes down into the prison and she meets Hannibal Lecter? Oh, yeah. And they said, do you still hear the screaming of the lambs? Yeah. We're the lambs, we're the sheep. That's what that was a metaphor, I bet you're for. The screaming of the sheep. Everybody around you is a victim. Everybody says goodbye, Roger. Okay, see you later. Yeah, see you, Roger. Yeah, goodbye, folks. You can slam it, it's okay, Roger. Carnage at the Durnford's house. Woo! And dropping shit and knocking shit. I'm going to pop that balloon's head here in a second. Yeah, it's like, for, you don't need to argue. You need to debate, right? And so debate is not an argument, folks. And so when someone asks somebody about something they don't like or something that seems controversial, don't always assume that it's an argument, even though I might employ that. But kind of treat it as... And, uh, and, you know, because this is not, you're not uh, in a parking lot jostling for a spot and having rage tank over and do stupid stuff. This is where everybody's already full of information and we should be able to rationalize it. And the misconceptions and the mis... you got to realize there's a lot of people out there that are not going to dress with a suit and tie that are not going to be what they see on TV from the media all the time that are going to tell the story as they see it, as they live it, as they feel it. And that's an important thing that everybody, it, you know, like I got marginalized last night because apparently I'm a crippled and a cripple is useless, a hopeless, it's no good to listen to a person who's crippled apparently. And everybody that cut stream last night knew, know what I'm talking about. But to, you know, you look at Stephen Hawkins with all the amazing stuff that he comes up with, people do that to him too, right? But, but I'm just saying it's just so bizarre. That, but that's the type of people that are down getting the homeless and bring them into Fukushima. It's They can't think. They're not capable of thinking. They're getting paid to do something. And they're just by nature evil. That's how they got the job in the first place. They're just cold, cold-hearted, cold-blooded. They're cruel. They can't have a relationship uh, with, their, with anybody, not even a pet. They can't even have a pet and treat it as if it's um, an individual that deserves at least, you know, uh, not to be abused, right? They, they can't see it that way. They see it as just something to get rid of insects in their homes. And I mean, the reality of it, yeah, everybody's saying goodbye. 
He's gone. But the comments take so long to show up because you got a sensor. Hang on, I'm going to turn this. I'm going to turn this over there. Hang on one more time. There we go. That's a lot better. I better turn that down a little tiny bit. All right. So let's come in and see if I can catch any questions. Hi, Tracy May. Hi, Jim. Oh, Mama Knox. Again, onions are like a, opinions are like a holes. Everybody has one and they all stink. <laughs> well, like, and I wasn't mentioned about that, but what I was trying to convey, I think, was that everybody has a different way of telling the story, the same story. Even if they get it right, everybody has their own little way of telling that story. And a lot of them, you know, opinions you got to watch out for, right? I don't do opinions, I do headlines. And if I do do opinion or conjecture, I mean, that's very clear that that's what that is. I make that perfectly clear, I hope. Uh, or at least I try to anyway, right? And, like, folks, I, I understand that nobody... Uh, thank you, uh, Bunny Burry Hill made a blog. And I radioactive isotope. Yeah, how cool is that? Right, and that's what we need. People out there taking charge. People out there, and they're doing that, right? The Fuka Hound blog, Kate got up there, is evidence of that. Uh, Burry Hill is another one. There's uh, Miss Frill is out there covering this all the time. We have Before It's News, Susan. There's links below to Susan. She has carried us right from day one over and over. Uh, there's many, many, many sites out there. I can't possibly keep up with how many people are re-uploading uh, this video and everybody else's videos that are got good and permanent, pertinent information into it. Right? I can't possibly cover all of that. I can't cover all the other narratives out there. I'm just me. That's all I am. And I'm here every night trying to keep it going, trying to keep it fresh, trying to keep it uh, digestible. And so every day we get a little bit more intelligent on this subject. We get a little bit more informed on this subject, become a little bit more articulate on the subject. We're able to see through the deceptions of this subject. We're able to, we're able to dissect the, the mani manipulation and then we're able to take that and use that as a tool right so every time I'm attacked I screen capture all those attacks and then I think about that I incorporate that uh, all the time into the things I'm doing to try because I realize if one person is doing it and they're teaching all the people how to attack you that way you need to be able to come out and have a decent argument to deal with their narratives and so that's what we've been doing, the bananas, the ex chest x-rays, walking in sunshine, potatoes, the normal radiation. You can fill my house up with bananas, it can't hurt me. But if you were to take a piece of rock from Fukushima or Chernobyl, the size it is, and I was the because it's a chunk, the x-rays and the gammas, or the x-rays and the neutrons are coming directly off it. And, but all the isotopes, all the gammas and the betas and alphas from the radioactive particles and atoms that are coming off that are much more scarier than anything imaginable. And that's why the licensing agreement at the nuclear power plant says they're supposed to be in a sarcophagus till the end of time. And so why did the nuclear power industry just keep dumping it into the ocean? They have every university on the planet at their disposal to build the containers, but they don't even try. They go half, they steal the money constantly for waste cleanup, they never clean it up. They go after the worst projects on, a, on the planet that they can never get back at, and so they'll contaminate till the end of time too. But Fukushima, third anniversary, has, is the tipping point, right? It's the tipping point, it's the end of TEPCO, and, but it's truly the end of Japanese as we know it. There will be no generations of Japanese people. Right, this is a sad fact. We have exterminated Japan in a slow kill, but still a fast kill. So 10 or 20 years, it's going to be a massive die-off because everybody ingested the radioactive material. Nobody's trying to help anybody dear. Nobody's trying to warn people dear to avoid ingesting more and accumulating more into their system. And that's wrong. Children are forced to run on top of 
a maddening amount of Beck wolves in the millions, playgrounds that are decontaminated. But then you have uh, the incinerators, you decontaminate the community, but the incinerators fill the community up with radioactive hot particles again. Because that's what incinerators are burning, is the radioactive hot particles they gather it up. They gather it up, put it in incinerators, it spreads all over the country again, it gets liberated again, they gather it up, burn it, move it to other communities that don't have as much radiation, they burn in that community, and so the whole island becomes highly radioactive. They can't avoid it using that routine. And so they said, fuck you. That's what they said to the Japanese people for a paycheck. They turned on their own children, their own friends, their own families, their own loved ones, and aunts and cousins and brothers and sisters and relatives and friends. They've turned on them all. They turned them on them, the government has on them all in order to keep a paycheck coming in. Unconscionable. But that's, you know, that's the epitome of what a democracy will, is. It's so fucking bad. A democracy is where 51% can take away the rights of 49%. If you're part of that 49%, you're not free, okay? And that's not what a democracy is supposed to be anyway. It's supposed to be like a republic where everybody has their rights and the system protects your rights and no one's allowed to encroach on your rights. You don't encroach on anybody else's rights and you actually have a pretty good society, long-term sustainable. But you all have the same rules. and But you're all protected under the same authority. But that's what they claim, but that's not what they do. That's what they've never done. Your justice system is full of non-government children, non-government entities, the most vulnerable of society. And as we've seen many times in history, if you, a society is judged on how they treat the most vulnerable of their society. Fukushima, Japan itself murders the most vulnerable in their society. Not only by putting all the homeless in to do the work that only skilled extraordinarily educated people should be doing the machines, but they they turn their backs on the children. The, the most, uh, the lowest form of life is the ones that victimize the ones they're put in charge of, right? And that's all Japan has done now. That's all Japan's government. They created 5,000 models in the first two months. They never told people to stay indoors once. Everybody knew the country was contaminated. They wanted to keep their jobs, they wanted to contain the power, they thought the whole country would panic. The whole country has to deal with it, just like we're dealing with it now. It's the people like Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, it's the people like Jay Cullen from the University of Victoria, British Columbia, it's the misrepresentations of the people like Dr. Raymond Gilmetty, it's the people like Dr. Chad, it's the people like Brian Hanley, Dr. Brian Hanley, writing books saying that this stuff is not dangerous, that it's no, in, no different than an x-ray, it's no different than a banana or potatoes or the potassium for you in drinking water or taking a walk in the sunshine from insignificant, normal, indigenous background radiation. It's those people that are doing, it, doing incredible damage to us getting on with this and dealing with it. We need to engineer nutrition back into our food and take the toxins out. We need to engineer DCA into our food. We need that take the technology that took it all away from us and now put it back into us because if we can take it away we can put it back right there's 4800 peer review academic studies every day if we just took one day's worth and put them to work on some of these issues we could probably solve them if we done it every day for a year we would solve it we pay for it we pay for the institutions the equipment the lights the powers the tenures we pay for the expendables but they lock it away in the ivory towers and make it prohibitively expensive to access and in fact you know 15 to 45,000 just to ask to access certain sections at the publishing houses but they get the copyrights from all your universities and nobody knows why what's the sense of all the university producing all the peer review academic studies 4800 a day three a minute if we're not going to use that for the betterment of society if we're only going to use it to deceive society and cause these griefs what is the sense right Okay, uh, Nuber Magic, good night, buddy. I'm off the air, folks. Hour and 48 minutes, pretty darn good. Thank you, everybody. You, you folks are fantastic. That was a pretty good ride, hour and 48 minutes. I covered everything I could. I'm not used to doing long shows. Illusion is over. Stacy Lane, good night, folks. Grandma Goldie, Dana Tostat, Boyk. 
Starlight, Lori, Franz, Youngie, a Diamond Dog, Kate, let me come up and say hi, Mark, Franz, Broken Ass Owner, ate some sushi today, I'll never do it again, man, I swear, I'll never fucking do it again, Data, murder makes money, that was a good comment, uh, yo, uh, Peter, what do we got going on here, can't catch that one, almost did, long gone, okay, well there you go, Smurf Boy, I won't, Smurf Boy, no worries, Reram, everybody, will, Mama Knox, thank you, thanks everybody for finding the time today, this was a different hour, different time, I know everybody got their normal schedule and they kind of liked that, but I thought we might get some other people out there that normally wasn't staying up late in their country, and Penny, uh, Ear, everybody, let me say hi to a couple more, Scottish girl, 2012, Mia, just seen ya. Lisa, Isotope, Hokey Pokey. <laughs> you guys are so fighting. Uh, whatever, folks, that's just the way it goes sometimes. We all see things differently, right? But we all gotta try to get a job done. Cave Explorer, Tree. Once again, the Real Night Writer, Toxic, and everybody else, Stetson, I'll come back down, that's all I got for everybody, Illusion is over, Illusion is over, uh, night everybody, that's all I can say, I'm Paul, Brian, John Townsend, uh, Star Charme Chairman, Dare Studios, I almost got that one, Candace, Troy, Terry, Yeah, it's a good one, Terry. Thank you. Dub Ford. And I'll just hang on and say hi to everybody. Laura. Lori, rather. James. Nicholas. France. Thank you. France Glantz. Kate. Yep. Penny. Thank you, James. Yeah, Stacy. Thank you. Stetson. Thank you, my friend. Yo, man. Sherman Studio, Starlight, Chandis, Lisa, Tracy, Toxic, 2012, Piano to Pieces, Starlight, Fix It Stupid, Kate, Miss Frill, Grandma, Woo! Eric, uh, Freeney. Yeah, one of these nights in Malaysia flights. Sylvia, Dub, James Nichols, Lisa, <laughs> Michael Han. Okay, folks, there we go. Pretty good. It was a good show. I mean, what were we supposed to do? Yeah, you never know. I may sneak back on the night for a half an hour show. I'm going to post a video right away. It's 20 minutes long. I probably screwed up a dozen times in it. I don't care. A few good laughs in it anyway. But I got all the apologists in there. Not all of them, but quite a few apologists. So you should be able to go listen to an apologist for a good laugh. I'm in there, I got some new material in there, but some of my old material in there because it's fitting. Uh, Toxic Andrew, thank you Andrew, Herman, everybody, Irinarel, Amthors, Panzer, yeah, that was awesome. I stayed on long enough to get a few extra names in that time. Miss Frill, everybody, we'll catch you tomorrow night. My kitchen night, you never know, probably not. I got a 20 minute video I'm going to put up here any minute. As soon as I click off this one, I'm going to click upload on the other one. So it'll pop up. This one is probably going to take uh, an hour or two hours. Who knows? Because it's a long video. Google's been screwing us over. But it will show up, folks. And it's usually like a 30 second or something stays there if you go back to the video. You know, what the hell is going on? Well, that's Google. It'll show up. It always does. Okay, folks. We'll catch you then. Take care. Happy anniversary, shitheads in uh, Tokyo. The Tepco fuckers. Fuck you, you pricks. See you later, folks. Not you. You folks are okay. I'm not saying fuck you, folks. I'm just saying fuck Tepco. I got a sign back in, thank goodness. So I got a chance to explain myself that time. That was like, I was like, oh shit, how did that come out? You're going to make me sign back in on this one before I can sign out.
So fuck you, Tepco, you pricks, you bunch of fucking scum, you dirtbags, you cowards, you fucking traitors, you useless fuckers, you maggots, you parasitic fucking vultures out there feeding off the most vulnerable in society. Fuck you, fuck.